Hey, thanks for tuning in to Twang and Bang. Those reloads are not going to be setting any records, but they are an improvement for me. Over a year ago, I took an advanced handgun class from Larry Vickers, but it wasn't until I installed the Vickers Tactical Glock controls from Tango Down that I was able to fully apply what he taught me. The combination of his techniques and these controls have made my reloads faster and easier, and that's why they're coming up next on Twang and Bang. The Vickers Tactical products for the Glock are not race parts. They're designed for duty and everyday carry guns. The magazine catch, slide lock, and magazine base plates provide just enough extension from the stock parts to improve your control of your Glock without affecting its overall reliability. They are available for Gen 3 and Gen 4 Glocks in both black and dark earth colors. The Vickers Tactical Slide Stop is precision stamped from 4130 chrome molly steel and it fits the majority of Glock pistols. It has a slightly extended thumb pad with deeper and more numerous serrations for use with or without gloves. The extended mag catch is injection molded from the same material as the factory part. The catch button is extended and radius without being obtrusive, and it's available in both Gen 3 and Gen 4 versions. The mag base plates are made of tough glass filled nylon for resistance to impact. They have a modestly flared shape with scalloped and grooved sides and molded dimples to allow numbering spare magazines. This Gen 4 G23 has factory parts, which are low and close to the frame. This Gen 4 G19 has all Vickers controls, and in comparison, it's easy to see how they provide extended control surfaces while balancing the need to remain practical. Glock really did a lot with the changes to the frame of the Gen 4 for guys with hands like mine. My hands aren't really small, but there's enough meat on them that it pulls my fingers away from the mag release button, away from the slide lock. So even though it has a larger mag release button than the previous generations, it's still not big enough for me to reach without adjusting my grip. And that's because it's still very flat in this area. So I, even though I can push it, I can't push it into the hole far enough that it releases the mag. I've got to adjust my grip so that I get out there on the button. Same thing with the slide lock. With the slide lock to the rear and my hand in a firing position, I can touch the slide lock with my thumb, but I can't actually actuate it without shifting my grip. Most people agree that the less you have to move your hand out of a firing position to control your weapon, the better. So the extended mag release only makes sense for a guy like me. But my original instruction, I was taught to drop the slide by using the over the top method. The logic was learn one way of doing something. That way you don't have to think about, well, am I clearing a malfunction or am I racking the slide home on a fresh magazine? But that's not the way Larry teaches it. He teaches you to use the slide lock to send the slide home on a fresh magazine. It is faster but that's not something that I could do when I took his class without adjusting my grip. And that's the same thing with a lot of other people. So that's where his controls come into play. I can, in a normal shooting position, drop a magazine without shifting my hand. I can, in a normal shooting position, not only reach the slide lock, but I have no problems sending the slide home on a fresh magazine. These have been a very big improvement in the control surfaces for me from the Gen 4 original factory control surfaces. <laughs> I really like them. To remove the factory slide lock, you need to first push out the trigger pin. You can bridge the frame over the slide so the pin has room to push out, and you'll probably need to wiggle the slide lock around so that it releases the trigger pin. Once that happens, the pin should easily pull the rest of the way out. The factory slide lock will now pull right out of its slot in the frame. Put the Vickers tactical slide lock in place and make sure the holes are all lined up as best as you can before starting to push the trigger pin back into place. Again, wiggling the slide lock will help you get the pin through its pivot hole. Make sure the slide lock seats in the lock groove of the trigger pin, replace the assembled slide, and perform a function test. Swapping the mag catch is a little trickier thanks to the way it captures the magazine catch spring. The spring is that straight metal piece in that V-shaped groove right there. 
use a flathead screwdriver to flip the spring out of the mag catch, which might take you a few tries before you get just the right angle. The spring will look like this when you're done. Though it's no longer hooked into the mag catch, you'll still need to work around the spring when pulling the catch out of the frame, but that's no big deal. The spring presents a little more of a challenge when installing the Vickers Tactical Mag Catch. In order to get the catch into the frame, you'll need to push the spring out of the way so that the mag catch can slide into place. Once the mag catch is all the way into the frame, just flip the spring into the slot and it should seat itself. Visually confirm that the spring is in place as you see here, then reassemble the Glock and function test. In order to understand the logic behind the magazine base plates from Vickers Tactical, you have to understand that Larry takes a big departure away from how the Glock was originally designed with regards to the space behind the magazines. He's seen enough Glocks go down because of getting gunk, getting dust, getting mud shoved up into the space underneath the grip that he thinks the first thing anybody should do with a Glock is put a grip plug in there. Plug that up so nothing can get in there. But that presents a problem because there are malfunctions where you have to rip the magazine out of the gun. You can't just drop it. And that's why that space is there. It's there so you can get your thumb in and grab the magazine to pull it out. That's why there's that cut out there and that all goes away when you put a grip plug. So now we're back to my Gen 4 G19. It's got all of the Vickers tactical products on it, including the new sights from Wilson Combat, which I really like. And I've used dummy rounds to create a double feed. You get a similar malfunction if you had a failure to eject and, and instead of having a full loaded round in there, you'd have a spent case jammed in there. But basically the top round on the magazine hasn't fully stripped out of the feed lips and it's wedged between the feed lips and the feed ramp on on the barrel and so when you go to press the magazine release to clear the malfunction the magazine doesn't drop that's why glock has a space back there so you could get your thumb in there push the button and rip the mag out that way but with larry vickers approved grip plug in place you can't do that anymore that's why he came up with these base plates. So now I push the magazine release, I pull on the base plate and it pulls right out. Much easier than actually doing it with Glock factory mags the Glock factory way. And it's still jammed up there. You clear the malfunction, load a new magazine, charge it and you're ready to go. It's a really good idea to wear safety glasses anytime you're working with springs and installing the Vickers Tactical base plates is no exception. Glock base plates have notches that lock on the tabs at the sides of the mag body. These tabs can be a bit stubborn to release even when using the correct technique, so don't be discouraged if you have trouble at first. Use a Glock tool or similar device to flip the spring base out of the way. Then use a tool to lever the base plate forward while pinching the mag body at the tabs, and with enough effort, the base plate should pop off the tabs and slide forward. Put the factory spring base back onto the spring and push the two into the mag body. Be sure to keep the spring base flat while sliding the Vickers Tactical base plate over the locking tabs and into place. Visually inspect to make sure that the base plate is fully seated on the mag body and the locking tabs. Be sure that the spring base is also fully seated. You might have to use your tool to jiggle the spring base until its tab completely fills the space in the base plate. Once everything's seated, set the mag aside for function testing the next time you're at the range. You can certainly justify installing any one of these accessories by itself, but I think the most benefit comes from using them together as a system along with the techniques that Larry teaches in his classes. You'll find that they cost right in line with other similar aftermarket products and you could get them directly from Tango Down or through most other major retailers of Glock aftermarket accessories. If you want to learn more about the Vickers Tactical Glock products made by Tango Down, be sure to click the link in the video description below. If you like this video, please take the time to log in and click the like button or the plus button on Google+. YouTube needs to know that you like firearms oriented programming and be sure to click over here to subscribe so you can catch my next videos on bows, guns, and other cool things. I really appreciate you watching Twang and Bang, and I hope to see you next time.